And uh, I have to apologize a bit before the Estonian part of the public because uh, you might already uh, be familiar with, their, with my research I'm going to talk about. There are still some certain uh, moments I uh, cannot, um, I, I have to repeat because uh, they have to, uh, they have quite, a, um, they're quite relevant uh, with the topic of this conference, but I've tried uh, to, to add, to bring in some uh, other or uh, new ideas, so, so I hope you won't be that, that bored. Uh, my paper is uh, discussing uh, the art practices of Tunis Wind, uh, the artist and artistic thinker, a legendary figure in Estonian art of the second half of the 20th century. At the end of the 60s, relying on his research of the art traditions of various cultures and periods, Wind began developing a conceptual platform for their interpretation of all kinds of uh, visual phenomena. He believes in a possibility of a universal aesthetic symbolical system, a basis for interpretation, synthesis, and creation of new visual and spatial structures that will have a positive impact on both an individual and also in their processes in their society. Wind was striving to produce new knowledge in art and visual culture, as well as to develop an all-encompassing aesthetics in order to transform positively the living environment. Wind is known primarily as a graphic artist and designer, but his universalism and aspiration to a harmonious environment materialized also in stage and interior designs, as well as in projects for a design of the urban space that surpassed the two-dimensional nature of graphic arts. These different attempts uh, to create a synthesis of visual art forms were uh, based on his uniform aesthetic and philosophical system. In order to bring together different aspects of Wind's art practices, I'd like to approach them through the conception of the total work of art, which historically also aspired to positive transformation of the society through a total experience. Uh, the concept of a total work of art, a Gesamtkunstwerk, as the synthesis of different art forms was formulated by Richard Wagner in the middle of the 19th century. Wagner's idea of the total work of art was not merely aesthetic, but also social and political. He saw great revolution and an ideal future society coming, where thanks to the new education, everyone would be an artist. But it was the total work of art, synthesis of music, dance, poetry, and visual arts that would create the condition necessary for social transformations making aware the need, uh, making aware of the need for the great changes. However, Wagner subsequently gave up his revolutionary rhetoric and dedicated himself to the creation of total stage mysteries detached from everyday reality. Wagner's legacy had a great influence at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th centuries, when numerous attempts to translate his ideas into the field of visual art have occurred, for example, in the program of the Darmstadt Artist Colony or that of Jugendstil and so on. The idea of the total work of art influenced directly and indirectly the early avant-garde experiments that transcended the borders between different art fields, uh, but also uh, between art and life. These issues are also topical in Tinismin's work in which ideological goals are less obvious than aesthetic ones, but nevertheless present. In the context of Estonia being annexed by the Soviet Union, where political and cultural developments were controlled by Soviet ideology, artists used various strategies to protect the sovereignty of their ideas, and the total work of art provided certain means for that. By the beginning of the 60s, which was uh, Denis Swin's starting position, the situation in the art life of the Estonian, Soviet Estonia became less harsh. The severe style um, 
uh, of the thought period transformed the paradigm of socialist realism, suggesting a kind of a modernist, uh, moderate realism. Mm, it became possible to get familiar uh, still half officially with the pre-war and pre-war avant-garde art and the, the, the art processes behind the Iron Curtain, um, which surely would be prosecuted as the worship of the West. We, a uh, student of the State Art Institute with a group of young artists, collected information from ex the exchange with an official artist in Leningrad and Moscow, uh, where Estonia Nula Soster played a great role, and also the special funds of the State Hermitage Library and uh, from journals of more liberal countries of the Eastern Bloc. Wind has become a leader of the new generation of the artists, proposing an individual artistic language and a wide knowledge of the old and new art, as well as the developments of culture and science as a purpose. Already in his uh, first theoretical writings in the end of the 60s and beginning of the 70s, Wind described a synthesis that would unite the volumes of different art traditions with new elements. He stressed the need for an ethical position and sought models in the early Renaissance and Romanticism, where, as he claimed, art was functioning as an integrated whole, providing society with relevant intellectual and spiritual uh, values and solutions. It is remarkable that uh, once he had mentioned Vasily Kandinsky, whose theory of abstract art was inspired by Wagner's ideas, but according to Wien's critique, Kandinsky's program was not able to function in an all-encompassing way. Uh, for the latter, somewhat surprisingly, found, Wind, uh, Wind found the resources in pop art. If it were to develop in the spirit of the early Renaissance, expressing new values for a universal synthesis. Uh, for Wind, uh, pop art acquired a meaning that differed totally from its uh, Western origins, in which the criticism of consumer society through a parody of its attributes was paramount. Under Soviet conditions, where a consumer society was basically non existent, and its mediocre objects were made attractive mostly by the deficits, pop aesthetics provided a constructive resource for making the living environment more pleasant, human, and integrated. At the end of the 60s and during the 70s, Wint introduced pop art in articles uh, and uh, indirectly in his graphic designs, and he was uh, seeking to create on um, and the pop aesthetics on the basis of the pop aesthetics and artistic language that would be relevant uh, both in fine graphic cards and also in the graphic design. Still, his experiments with pop art had more in common with the psychedelic subculture of the flower children, which tried to unite aspects of Oriental and Western cultures. For instance, motifs of oriental symbolism had a pop-like effect in uh, his designs. Stylized images and bright colors on a minimalist background were both decorative and innovative and influenced uh, certain developments of Estonian graphic design. Uh, serialized and widely circulated graphic designs give the opportunity for the aesthetization of the everyday environment through its uh, individual objects, which found a larger audience than works of art at exhibitions. Wynne's first programmatic text also emphasized the need to include the experience of early and older art traditions, putting them into practice at a new level. His idea of synthesis was not limited by style. At the end of the 60s and in the 70s, he combined pop art with Rococo, Art Nouveau, the art and crafts movement, or, um, oriental aesthetics, as well as uh, with uh, minimalist modernist form. Uh, here is an interesting remark. Probably you can find on the left, you can see on the left below, a leaflet for the ice cream. 
uh, products. But why it's interesting, it uses the colors of Estonia national flag, the uh, blue, black, and white. That was uh, national symbolics that was prohibited at the time. So we used these uh, designs to, to uh, sort of smuggle uh, the prohibited uh, national symbolics into, into the public, public sphere. Uh, pop uh, Jugendstil, which united the attractiveness of pop art and the synthesis of Jugendstil, manifested in Wynn's coloring book into the year 2000. He used the children's book as a cover for introducing the ideas of modern aesthetics, which would be realized simultaneously with technical developments everywhere, in the home environment, urban, and also outer space. In cityscape illustrations, we depicted buildings inspired by the architecture of Antonio Gaudi and Kenzo Tange, and by motifs from the paintings of Hieronymus Bosch, symbolically uniting contemporary phenomena and all the traditions. This interest to the ultra-modern urban space with its skyscraper, skyscrapers linked to the symbol of a tower will become significant 20 years later, and it means urban visions. Being up to date with the latest developments, we took into account earlier cognitive phenomena, so to speak, development cycles. In the illustrations of future interiors, along with the new Japanese-like style introduced by the Erst and German magazine Schönen Wohnen, he also used elements from earlier styles of Art Nouveau and Art Deco, which were likewise in turn influenced by traditional Japanese interiors. Here, Wynne's philosophical point of departure remained traditional Japanese aesthetics and the conception of empty space. His idea of, a, of spatial synthesis took actual shape in the late 60s and the early 70s in total interior design of his and his wife Mara Wynne's apartment. This was based on the ideal of Japanese living space and intended to fu function as an integrated organism, compact and perceived as a whole. Still, in the predominantly empty and wide space, modernist aesthetics was revealed. This kind of minimalist was clearly more radical than a traditional Japanese interior. Art historian Andres Kurt has described Wynne's ideas of interior design as, a, I quote, a certain totality of the interior, a correspondence between the space, the things in it, and uh, the user, end of quote. And link them with the interest in Art Nouveau, and especially in, in its uh, Gesamtkunstwerk potential of the younger generation of artists in the period discussed. Still, compared with the all-encompassing Arnova design of uh, Henri van de Velde, for example, where, as the anecdote says, even the artist's wife's dress was designed, designed to match the interior, and it left more space for the variables. According to his ideas, the minimalist interior allowed every new, every small detail to influence the character of the space thus encoding the potential of a dynamic environment. I quote, we are in the midst of the constant change. Here every flower, every picture, every new item grabs attention immediately. And also people in their clothes make the interior to look different, end of the quote. So this was not a fixed environment, but um, open playground. While living in his apartment, Wind has changed the color of the interior elements like floors or shelves for the sake of a new impact within the certain framework. He used a similar method in his graphic works, creating composition through different combinations of the chosen set of elements. This idea of a dynamic change refers to the techniques of combinatorics implied, for example, in the Chinese Book of Changes that was very important for Wynne's method, but also as a device of modernist art, like in Eugen Feldström's Planetarium project that was introduced by Wind and the Almanac, Kunst in 1975. Wynne's graphic works are characterized, on the one hand, by medium specificity, specificity and autonomy. On the other hand, these are the models for something larger, which extends to the real environment. 
to quote Wind himself, and before actual rooms are built, they appear in the artist's works. In Wind's works, we see a chandelier, elegant vases, and a mirror familiar from his home, but they also offer more general structures for the ordering of space, like geometrically shaped shelves. Even Wind's abstract compositions recall sometimes the interior of his home, where the articulation of white surfaces is emphasized by the rhythm of black details. It was an inspiration to create a universal structures functioning both inside and outside the pictorial space as a principle of formal and symbolic balance. While graphic works of Wind could be seen as the model of his home, he referred in turn his home as the model for interior design in general. In an article for the magazine uh, Kunstiagodo or Art and Home, Wind used photos of, of his home interior to illustrate his ideas of the special design, introducing their accomplishment in practice, sometimes with quite direct guidelines and tips. To bring in, in another historical parallel, Wind's home interior can be compared with the spatial synthesis of the homes of German artists Johann Michael Bochard, Bossart and Wenzel Habrick, who developed their, in the 20s and 30s Wagner's ideas in art, design, and architecture. The common feature is here the artist's home functioning as an experimental platform where the life of the artist became the part of the total work of art created by him, himself. Although the artists discussed could not develop their ideas on a larger scale, uh, Bossert and Hubrick because of the economical and wind because of the ideological or political reasons, they saw the homes as certain models for their ideal architecture of the future. Wind's home was in sharp contrast to the environment of Mustama, uh, a district where it, was, where it was situated in, like a refuge that ignored everything around. Wind lived in an environment created with the help of his aesthetic system, which transcending the boundary between art and life manifested its totality, though only within its um, uh, private domestic domain. Wind dealt with problems that uh, transcended history and reality, creating a hermetic and all-encompassing theory which only he could uh, totally comprehend and manage. Still, he was eager to share his knowledge, which uh, reveals a certain sense of mission and endeavor to reform reality by propagating his aesthetic principles to be adopted by a wider circle. His home was a platform for the unofficial art life providing a venue for meeting of the local intelligentsia and hosting foreign visitors for discussing and information exchange. From the 60s until now, Wind holds open lectures which became a source of alternative knowledge with the representatives of several generations. Besides his home lectures, Wind shared his ideas in publications. In the 70s, he designed the Kunstalmanach and the Kultur, Yaelu or Culture and Life magazine, where he contributed a series of articles from an analysis of Oberberg's works to that of uh, hyperrealism. Uh, those art phenomena were not really approved by official doctrine, and some of them were introduced in Estonia for the first time. Wind presented his conceptual of visual images and articles in, and indirectly in the graphic designs of popular, um, uh, popular science publications and fiction. Thus, he created an extra informational layer or a sort of a palimpsest in design for the book The Science and Today, somewhat hijacking the publication. Next to scientific, uh, illustration and illustrations and photographs, he placed images represented other conception, conceptions of the world and the production of modernist and contemporary artists. That was uh, quite independent from the main text. So ignoring the text, you would get uh, quite a consistent visual narrative, but maintaining one's own conception. 
Wien's aesthetic philosophical system united oriental philosophy with modern aesthetics and the Renaissance hermetic tradition with contemporary knowledge. He was also influenced of uh, Carl Gustav Jung's comparative psychoanalysis, where a universal symbolic structure and archetype plays an important role. Wind was interested in the potential of visual images and assigned a special conceptual capacity to geometric science. I quote, Beliefs and philosophical thoughts are hidden in science. They can be used as tools in meditation. They contain generalizations for understanding the world and aesthetic programs. They are talismans and magical ritual items. End of the quote. One, uh, one of the important archetypes in Jung's conception is the mandala. This depicts the integrity of the universe as well as that of the individual and acts as a device for finding that integrity. Mandalic potential is possessed by symmetric structures which emphasize central point. In the lattice mode, uh, Wind has highlighted the ability to structure perception and has used lattices and spaces inside and, so and outside of pictures. In his conceptual project, Mandala House, he used the lattice motif on the facades and the mandalas in the floor plan plans. The mandala house was to function three-dimensionally. Uh, moving through it would become a kind of meditation, I call it here Mari Lanemets, but also as two-dimensionally, as an image for meditation. Uh, Wind used mandala-like structures in his graphic designs while not imposing their symbolism. He smuggled the alternative ideas to the broader public, transmitting information and the positive psychological impact he believed would be perceived subconsciously. He also created talismans, for example, placing from his own word the protective talisman to the cover of the Almanach Kunst, one on the left, uh, the only magazine of visual arts in Soviet Estonia when the authorities wanted to close it. Was this talisman working or not? The magazine was not closed. In this belief to in the magical impact of the image, a certain mythological thinking is revealed. Wind's so-called psychogeometric method was devoted to the creation of mandala-like compositions in order to have positive effect on the viewer by expressing ideas of concentration, balance, and activeness. Here, Wind has stressed the possibility of a new type of organization for the entire hu human environment. From individual science, he has moved toward science systems, established in ornaments, which, I quote, includes not only architecture, but everything surrounding it, from people's clothing to park ensembles. End of the quote. Wind compositions are ornamental by nature and seek the relevant semantic potential. In the stage designed for Rabindranath Tagore's play, The Post Office, a psychogeometric lattice structure and the warm colors were supposed to feed positive energy to the audience. Stage design, however, uh, is looking like it would have stopped, stepped out uh, from one of Wynne's graphic works of that time. Wynne's goal was to totally change everyday reality by creating a personal context. Here, individual items, including mass-produced ones, would be merged with the totality of the environment. This is demonstrated by Wynne's second apartment on Gonsieri Street, which received a total design in uh, the early 80s, with an emphasis on Chinese aesthetics. Black geometric furniture was often comprised of standardized uh, Soviet furniture elements that had undergone an unrecognizable metamorphosis. Tower-like shelves suggested, again, a model for larger developments, forecasting uh, Wind's urban visions of the 90s with real tower uh, skyscrapers. The social optimism that followed the restoration of Estonia's independence encouraged Wind's more direct interventions. In articles and by participating in architectural competitions, he proffered several projects for reforming the symbols and the urban space related to the state's new identity. In the first half of the 90s, Wind introduced his vision 
of uh, the island of uh, Nysar in the Tallinn Bay, where he proposed to establish an international center for culture and tourism. He was relying on uh, his own dramatic analysis of the territory and so in the landscape resemblance with the yin and yang graphic symbol. For him, the place was embodying the principle of balance of the opposites, which complement each other, like the islands in the sea, Nysera and Agna, corresponding to the lakes, Ulamist and Horku, uh, inland. Uh, Wint interpreted his, uh, this uh, landscape as a good sign and suggested that skyscrapers uh, would also have a good influence, activating like acupuncture needles, the energy of the place. In his visions on the skyscraper complex that is not typical for Estonian architecture at all, Wint used his own drawings, but also architectural fantasies of Yakov Chernihov, uh, the Russian constructivist architect. And the argument of uh, Germanic activization uh, was also based on this vision of a high-speed rail system uniting East, Middle, and uh, North Europe, uniting different European capitals on a map. He created a graphic image, which started with the Germanic figure of the dragon's head, Capo Draconis, and ended with that of a uh, dragon's tail, Coda Draconis, both predicting good luck. Accomplishing this figure of a great dragon, a positive synergy in Europe would be created. Um, still, as uh, those visions were, were futurist and anachronistic at the same time, they didn't find enough resonance and none of them was accomplished. Having experienced a skeptical reception, uh, Wynne continued to share his ideas only in lectures and exhibitions. However, the focus was not on uh, creative work, but on introducing his conception of science systems. Wynne's conception deals with images and visual science systems from America to Australia and from past to the present day, focusing on, so to speak, proto-images, which he inter interprets as universal cosmogonic symbols, elements of a common worldview and the means of a shared signification. Uh, Wynne's aesthetic of philosophical system considers both images and space as visual signs and is not dividing visual forms into high arts and low applied uh, visual forms or images. That non-hierarchical approach was quite above his time and became topical um, a bit later in visual culture studies or the Bildwissenschaft discipline. Here is uh, remarkable the documentary, The Belt of Lielvarde, that was uh, made with uh, cooperation with, uh, with the Latvian film director Ansi Sepners. Um, Yes, you can see it. Um, and this uh, documentary highlighted the parallels between the ornaments of the Baltic countries and the uh, sign systems of all the other cultures in the world, stressing the ability of ornament to express universal processes. Dealing with seemingly neutral, eternal issues was at the same time evaluating Estonian ethnographic heritage we supported the Estonian national identity. Wynne's conception is a kind of uh, total theory. It evokes the history of the images as an all-encompassing totality, where everything is interconnected and philosophical conception can be expressed by images. Images act here as ideograms, where structural resemblance highlights semantical similarity. This has parallels with Abi Warburg's iconological approach to migrating images and his Nemozina Atlas project. The belt of Liel Varda can be seen as a multimedia atlas. It used cinematic language for the purpose of juxtaposing different images, demonstrating in a very dynamic way the formal and conceptual similarity of different visual signs by allowing them to grow one from another. 
Ich hörte die Hübermann has uh, described Nemazina Atlas through the concepts of image and motion and montage. In which documentary, we can see them, both of them in a true action. Still, uh, while the essence of Warburg's uh, Pathos formal is desire, uh, anxiety, and drama, the focus of wind is balance, harmony, and order, though in a dynamic change. The first is problematic, the second is axiomatic, uniting different or even opposite phenomena in a manner that is free of conflict. As a quick conclusion, um, Wien derived his uh, conception from the traditions of the past, yet his project took sometimes rather futurist and uh, utopian forms. His aesthetic utopia was a means for both transformation of the world as well as the escape from it. In the Soviet context, the totality of his home was merging into escape to the private utopia from the collective utopia of socialism, which became a totalitarian anti-utopia. But Wien has used the same aesthetics for the hidden interventions to the public space within efficient channels. The restoration of Estonia's independence encouraged Wind to act openly and suggest ideas for redesign of urban space. In Wind's work, the theme of a total work of art has been treated by researchers primarily in their connection with his ideas of interior design and their implementation in his Mustama apartment. But this conception could be expanded to his other practices, although his total work of art exists rather on a virtual plane. It's a totality that develops in one's imagination and is comprised of uh, both theoretical and practical elements. We aspire to universal principles that are related to Wagner's idea of a total work of art and everyone becoming an artist. In the case of Wind, the designer of his or her own living space. Thank you for your.